there's another specific example of using a Domeki rig that I don't know what it does to the fish or the, the mood of the fish or the reaction that really helps with triggering to get them to bite. But a little trick that I do is, so I'll throw the Domeki rig out. I'll let it sink, let it sink. Okay, the fish sees it. He's starting to react. I'm going to start pulling it away from him. Now this is on a cast, not below the boat. He's going to start reacting. He's going to start coming up to it, coming up to it, coming up to it. And then he's going to shy off. He's not going to bite. Okay. He's going to come up to the Domeki rig. He's going to kind of see what it's, you know, what's going on. Kind of similar to what he did with the drop shot. And he's not going to bite the Domeki rig. But now I got him to come up, you know, let's say he was in that 15 foot of water. I got him to come up like six feet off the bottom. Instantly, as he's not reacting to that Domeki rig, I have my drop shot rod on ready. And I reel that Domeki rig in as fast as I can and throw that drop shot directly in front of his head. And he's so fired up from seeing that Domeki rig that he's so like interested in that, but he didn't bite it, that he'll come down to the drop shot instantly. And that's how I've caught you know, a lot of big fish that generally won't bite is if you hit them with a bait, they look at it, they react to it, and then you instantly get a new bait in there like the drop shot, um, you get them to bite. It's, it's a trick that I've learned you know, just through experience fishing for single fish or fish in a group or things like that. But I just think like the subtle change, it's like smallmouth love change, whether they're sitting around boulders and grass next to it or anything like that. The same goes for fishing them with different kinds of baits. I mean, you could catch five smallmouth out of a group, you stop catching them, you change baits, all of a sudden you catch one. The same thing goes for if you see a fish sitting there, you throw a bait in at it, he doesn't bite it. You throw a different bait in, he doesn't bite it, but he got excited over it. And then you switch it up to the same one that he didn't bite. Generally, he's going to do something with that. He either has to eat that one or do the same thing he did the first time he threw it in there. So, you know, that's a little trick I do with fishing smallmouth that maybe a lot of other people don't do. And, uh, and yeah, for the most part, you know, we talked about that fish was a specific fish that I saw, you know, by itself on LiveScope. Now we're going to talk about a group of fish, you know, a fish that you're going to, you're going to react to his mood when there's, you know, a group of 10 fish next to him. For the most part, you know, those three baits, obviously they're key baits for fish like that. But when you want to dissect and pick out the biggest fish out of that school, you know, if there's five, six, seven, eight of them, and you can see, you know, each one of them and all their size, you know, their size on the graph, obviously you want to catch the biggest one in that school, right? What's the best bait for doing that? Well, to me, it's a drop shot. Um, you can get it down there, you know, quick enough to them. Um, now, obviously you're not going to get the right fish to react to your bait, you know, right away when he's in a school of six to eight fish. But for the most part, you know, that's, that's the bait that's going to get down to him and at least get that fish to react, you know, to see what he does. And then this is where I'm going to kind of lead into um, where the Ned rig has a lot of power too. So say I got that fish to go down on that drop shot. He didn't bite. Now this is in a group of fish we're talking about, you know, six to eight, maybe 10 smallmouth. And he went down to that drop shot. He didn't bite. Like, shoot, okay, now maybe I'm going to try the Domeki rig. I swim the Domeki rig over the top of those eight fish and none of them reacted. Like none of them came up. None of them did nothing. That, that just gave me an idea that those fish don't want to come up. They don't want to come up and feed. They don't want to come up, you know, two, three, even four feet to feed on anything. Um, generally a fish, if he's interested and he's feeding up, you know, he's going to come up and look at a big white minnow that swims over the top of him, um, and at least just give it a little bit of interest. But if he doesn't give it any interest at all, I know instantly that those fish are feeding on the bottom. Um, you know, they're chasing gobies. They're maybe possibly around the spawn, you know, just something that's keeping them on the bottom, whether it could have been a weather change, um, it could be rough water, it could be a lot of different scenarios. Um, there's a lot of scenarios and I, I really don't know, you know, specifically certain scenarios that are better than others, why they do that. But uh, generally, you know, it, it usually is because of forage and things like that. But 